Every artist at some point wants to bring their imagination in front of an audience, whether it's on a small smartphone screen, a hundred inch TV, or a large theater screen. Today, everyone has technology literally in the palm of their hands to do anything. Unfortunately, not every piece of tech or software is built the same, especially when it comes to making movies. Whenever one program excels at something, you can be assured it lacks in another area. For example, Maya is great for animation, but struggles with simulations. Houdini excels at simulations, but falls short in modeling. 3ds Max is fantastic for modeling, but isn't ideal for sculpting. It's like every application you pick up, you're always leaving something behind. You end up having to install Houdini, Maya, 3ds Max, Substance Painter, Photoshop, and many more just to complete a project. This is obviously ridiculously expensive, considering that every application mentioned requires a costly subscription. On top of that, you need editing programs like Premiere Pro to edit your movie, and render engine licenses like V-Ray, Arnold, and others. These costs and the experience required to use these applications have become significant hurdles in making movies. But I'm here to tell you about a small program, around 200 metabytes, that's open source, requires no subscription, no credit card, no sign up. All you need is the sheer will to learn. Of course, I'm talking about Blender. I've tried every 3D program from 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, to Houdini, and every time I always go back to Blender. Today, I'm here to tell you that it's the program you should be using to make movies. Everything you need to make a movie is available in Blender, from VFX, set extensions, camera matching, object tracking, explosions, destruction, special effects, and more. There's a good reason to start making movies in Blender, and it's not just for animated movies. I'm talking about live action films too. You've probably seen some Blender movies like Tears, Dynamo Dream, Skywatch, and many more. What makes movies hard to make, regardless of the program, are the elements that go into world building. Objects, trees, cars, people, essentially everything that shapes the environment. Every object has to be either made from scratch or acquired from a library of assets. Take landscapes as an example. Whenever a scene takes place outside, you need a sky and a well-built environment. While creating these environments yourself would be fantastic, it's simply too much work, especially since they aren't the main focus of your movie. Tools like True Terrain, Gaia, and World Creator have been used for ages by different artists to craft amazing worlds. Their procedural nature allows a level of customization that makes your creations feel authentic to your vision. Because Blender tries to be a jack of all trades, it ends up being a master of none. This isn't a limitation, it's a feature. Blender gives you a starting point for everything, allowing you to build other tools to enhance it. For instance, Blender includes support for HDRI images and a physical procedural sky sufficient for most renders. However, if you desire more detail, there are multiple ways to enhance the sky texture in Blender. The new volume shaders make it super easy to add clouds, volumetric fog, shadows, and dust. For even more detail, add-ons like Pure Sky Pro provide control and detail on par with Unreal Engine or other software. While the growing number of Blender add-ons may seem overwhelming, the diversity and range of capabilities they offer are invaluable to the community. Almost every Blender artist is now somewhat of an add-on developer, ensuring that whatever you need, Blender has it. For example, the Simply Cloth Pro add-on brings functionalities similar to Marvelous Designer into Blender. Without these daring developers, such features would take ages to reach Blender, often gatekept by big corporations like Adobe, Autodesk, and others. Since the Blender Foundation Foundation is a registered company, they aren't as daring as individual artists. Things like Auto Painter AI, an add-on for generating 3D models directly inside Blender, would never be made by the Foundation because they won't touch anything with AI in its name due to the backlash they would receive. But AI is a monster we have to live with, and either we adapt or die. The Auto Painter add-on makes texture painting remarkably easy. It gives you a completely painted model in just a few seconds. You can refine it to make it better or use it as is because it already looks great. Imagine how much time this can save you. There are also add-ons like the AI library that let you generate 3D characters that are fully textured and ready to rig and animate, something we wouldn't have if not for the add-on community. Add to that Auto Depth AI, another AI add-on that can generate detailed meshes to use in your scene. Say you need a background shop with depth details, so it doesn't just look like a flat image in the background, but more like the shop itself is there, with self-shadowing and existing within the 3D space. That way, if you want to use effects like volumetric fog, they would actually work. 
These and other similar add-ons would never be made by the Foundation, and for the right reasons. We, the community, have the freedom to be messy and carefree. They don't. This is just scratching the surface of what Blender can do for filmmakers. It's a constant work in progress, and what is being developed can be anything. You're not just waiting on what the Blender Foundation deems important to work on. So occasionally we get an amazing surprise, a tool you may not have thought you needed until you see it. Take LensSim. This add-on has been making waves in the community because of how realistic it makes bokeh effects and lenses in Blender look. I bet most of you didn't see anything wrong with the default bokeh until you saw the LensSim video. That's how amazing Blender is. Every problem is being solved in real time. Blender may not be as powerful as Houdini when it comes to simulations, but if you want something equivalent, add-ons like RBD Lab will not disappoint. It's perfect for bringing Blender simulations closer to what Houdini can do. It won't be 100% equal to Houdini, but it will get the job done. And for a lot of Blender artists, that's exactly what they need. Most industry standard programs are designed to solve industry standard problems. But uh, as indie filmmakers and artists, we face different challenges. I don't need a program that can simulate millions of characters in a crowd. All I need is a few hundred that my computer can handle. And for that, the population add-on is just enough. I don't need to set up crowd agents with complicated behaviors. I just need a crowd that behaves predictably with various animations, unique characters, and more. I don't need a complex traffic system that responds to every change in a city, customizable down to the last pixel when no one will even notice. So I use add-ons like Traffic, which has everything set up for me. Cars, roads, animations. I just hit play and everything works. Blender is truly for everyday creators. And, and if you don't have a team to solve all the problems you'll encounter when making your movie, Blender is the right choice because it was created for small teams and individuals like you and me.